Hi everyone, the Inyan Acher Jewish Music Band, Beauty and the Book, an exhibition at the Israel Museum, honoring the IDF reservists, today on Israeli Salad. Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. From after Passover, Pesach, until the festival of Lag Omer, it is customary for men to refrain from shaving, as you might have noticed, and refrain from enjoying music. This is to commemorate the plague that had killed 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva at around the year 120 of the Common Era. So now that we've reached Lag Omer, it's finally time to shave and meet another music group. This time we meet Inyan Acher the hottest thing going for religious weddings in Israel. Around five years ago, Akiva Meller and Noam Jacobson, two religious students at the Rimon Music School in Tel Aviv, decided to form a new Jewish music band. When we got together, we thought we'd be an underdog band in those days. We wanted to present existing songs with a new twist. We wanted to say something. The new band was called Inyan Acher, a different issue. Music has existed for centuries. So what new approach did Inyan Acher bring to the Jewish music scene? It's especially in the adaptations and the instruments we use. We don't have keyboards or brass instruments like saxophones, trombones or trumpets. The ones that do. We wanted to present something else, something more gentle, something real, less cantorial. Inyan Acher's music combines many influences, like American rock, Israeli music, and even Native American rhythms. Today, Inyan Acher can be heard almost every day in wedding halls throughout the country. Some might look at this occupation as less prestigious, but the group sees performing as a wedding band as a perfect way to reach their target audience and to spread out the word about new Jewish music. In a wedding, you have to know how to take a step back and understand that you're not there for your own show. You're there to serve, to bring joy to the bride and groom. Being one of the first Israeli groups to present a new kind of Jewish music, members of Inyan Acher feel like pioneers in this field. I mean, it's sort of now there are, I don't know, between 10 and 20 bands playing in our style in the wedding, wedding room. Before us, there wasn't a lot of this style of music at weddings. Not a lot of our kind of rhythm and color. Inyan Acher's first album combines original music with covers of previously composed Jewish songs. Besides creating and writing new songs, Inyan Acher finds a special value in renewing and reviving older songs. The Jewish melodies, the Hasidic melodies, have something magical. It's amazing. You find a new melody and rejuvenate it. It's a great joy. When there's no renewal, you can't stay in your place. It's backwards or frontwards. For Noam Akiva and the rest of the group, being involved in this special field of music is their ultimate spiritual expression which lets them convey their religious feelings. With words, you can sometimes feel ridiculous. It's the same words again and again. But music, music is emotion. It's pure. Okay, so here's the new disc of Inyan Acher. So guys, let's finish with some tunes. Okay. One, two, three, go! <laughs>
Visit the Israeli Salad website. On the Israeli Salad site, scroll through all the editions, see what topics were presented on each program, and simply click on the icon to watch your favorite program. Also, watch all our fantastic music videos featured right here on Israeli Salad. So be sure to click on www.israelnationaltv.com slash salad.htm. That's www.israelnationaltv.com forward slash salad dot htm. We'll have more music from Yan Acher at the end of our program. The Jewish nation is known as the people of the book. That is, of course, because of the book of books, the Bible, that guides our everyday lives. But are we also the people of the book when it comes to literature? In Israel, like in many countries around the world, Literature is struggling against modern developments like television and internet. The Israel Museum in Jerusalem is promoting reading through an exhibition called Beauty and the Book. This exhibition captures the magic, enjoyment, art, and imaginative power of books in their many forms. David Miller reports. Well, we're here in Jerusalem today at the Israel Museum for a grand opening, a special exhibit in a word. Well, actually, a lot of words. The exhibit is about the beauty of the book. Let's take a look at the book. I think people sometimes they think that books are boring and I wanted to break this myth so uh, this was really the beginning of the idea. We discovered through uh, uh, public, uh, public researches that uh, the rate of uh, youngsters are reading books is, is falling. And this is uh, actually across the country. Even though I'm a great fan of technology, nothing replaces books. Just holding a book, reading it, judging it, thinking about it, going back to a page, it's an irreplaceable experience. Uh, books are also colorful, and, uh, and I think it's very important to show all kinds of uh, ways to look at books. Uh, they're not only gray and black and white. The exhibition intentionally blurs the distinction between the world of literature and the world of art. I started looking for, for uh, works of art that are connected with books. Uh, for books that are really works of art themselves and uh, putting them all together uh, was really the work of uh, this exhibition. The museum presents books and the act of reading in painting, photography and sculpture. The books in the exhibition range from books from medieval times to new interactive and virtual books. The exhibition offers the children many interactive activities all related to books. In the recycling workshop, the kids create works of art from old phone books. In this room, the kids see that from one thing, you can create many things. It's sometimes hard to stop them. This develops creativity and originality. In many cases, the field of illustrating corresponds with the world of books. The Israel Museum dedicated part of the exhibition to the illustrators of books. We believe that the book illustrations are the first drawing that a child sees, and that's what they remember. Most people remember the author, but not the illustrator. 
So we decided to present the illustrators who wrote letters about their childhood and about their drawings. Although children are sometimes more familiar with the computer and television than their parents, it seems that when they meet the world of books, they're enchanted very quickly. Reading a book lets your imagination run wild. You can relate to the character, enter the plot, and understand his actions and thoughts. Books you can read again and again, but a TV is always changing. That's not fun. And even bookmarks are honored here with an exhibit of their own. They say that the cheapest way to travel is by reading a book. If that's the case, we're in a virtual travel agency of the imagination. Reporting from the Israeli Museum and Beauty in the Book exhibit, for Israeli Salad, I'm David Miller. Beauty in the Book runs through May of 2006, so make sure to check it out. Please send your comments, ideas, and questions to the Israeli Salad email, yoni at israelnn.com or leave a message on the Israeli Salad voicemail at international dialing code 972-3-918-5554. That's 972-3-918-5554. The State of Israel decided to mark May 29th as the second annual Reservists Day. Reserve duty is a major issue in Israel, as it is an essential part of the army struggle for a secure state. Last year we joined one of the events and got a close look at these important ready reserve soldiers of Israel's Defense Force. Miluim is the term in Hebrew for reserve duty. This year Israel's Defense Force decided to honor Israel's reservists by designating the festival of Lagba Omer as a day of saluting Israel's reservists. On this day, we want to emphasize that we don't take the reservists for granted. Rather, we look at them as a special group of people who we must treat in a way that will assure their remaining as reservists for many more years, honor and appreciation. On Miluim Day, ceremonies took place in honor of the reservists throughout the country. Many sites and companies provided discounts and special deals for the Miluim Nikim. Throughout the past three and a half years of the current conflict with the Arabs, the Miluim service has been a consistent and concrete contribution to Israel's security. The reservists take part in many complex security operations and risk their lives doing so. In the Glilot army base north of Tel Aviv, reservists from different units were given commendations for their service. My father is a commanded reservist and he deserves it. I think it is a great idea to have this ceremony because they all really deserve it. I came here to receive a reward. I was recommended for this award. I'm very happy. It's a great honor. I received an award from my unit. I represent not only myself, but my unit, my crew, my brigade, whoever sent me. Despite their obvious contribution to Israel's security, the reservists do not always receive the appreciation and respect they deserve. They do not receive the necessary accommodations in work, education, and in other areas of civilian life. The Miluim Appreciation Day, which is planned to become an annual event, is aimed at improving the attitude towards these civilians who once a year halt their regular life in order to fulfill their military service. What's important is what we feel, not what other people feel about us. We feel that thanks to us, we can live here safely. That's why we are here. We're very proud to play before the reservists. After all, we'll all be reservists. When talking about the total amount of IDF reservists that must be thanked, you must multiply the official number by the amount of family members of each reservist. I think that this day of appreciation is at least 50% in honor of our families and not only for us. 
It's hard for the family, the children, our places of work, but it's something that I feel that I must do. I have no choice. In the army, there's a phrase, difficult but worth it. It's difficult, especially now, with the new addition to our family. Many hours are invested in Miloim. I think that we contribute to the country by helping mom when he's not home. The time when he was in Jenin was very hard, but he has great satisfaction. That's how it is here. This is our part. This is where we live. And now our weekly insight. Today we'll be discussing the Parsha, the portion of the week of Bamidbar, the first Parsha of the book of Bamidbar, the book of Numbers. Shalom to Rabbi David Sampson in Jerusalem. Shalom Yoni and Shalom to all of our viewers. The Parsha begins with the commandment to count the people of Israel. What's the meaning of this commandment? Other than a practical tool to help manage the nation, is there a spiritual meaning to this commandment? Yoni, that's a, a very interesting question. It's a very simple question. And um, I think it, the answer to that question is a very deep answer. Why does God want to count us? I think the easiest way to understand that is by uh, looking at a little kid who has uh, a collection of marbles. And uh, you'll see that all the time he counts his marbles and nothing happened since yesterday but again he'll count his collection of marbles and it's just because he likes his collection so much that he'll just keep counting and counting uh, that's the way the Medrash describes the relationship that God has with the Jewish people and that uh, he continuously counts us and it's a sign of the love that God shows towards the Jewish people and uh, it's something that we uh, actually endear, the fact that God wants to count us. And that's why we find in this, uh, in this chumash many, many countings. Rabbi Samson, we learned that counting people must be done carefully and that one must not just count for any reason. What's the problem with counting people? That's true, Yoni. There is, uh, there is a problem with, uh, with counting the Jewish people. And... There's an underlying concept that the blessing does not reside amongst anything which is visible. And something which is invisible to the eye, a blessing can reside within. And that if you don't count the people, you don't know how many there are and they can uh, be fruitful and multiply. And there won't be antagonism to their number. If all of a sudden we were 50 million, 100 million people would say, oh, look at those Jews, there are Jews everywhere. And uh, we might have to fight some kind of an animosity or antagonism. And therefore, there's a problem with that. So there, uh, even though it is a, a very dear concept for the Jewish people to be counted by God, nevertheless, for us to count ourselves, it's not showing the love that God has for us, but it's actually showing the love that we have for ourselves. And that's something which is not supposed to be so endeared. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. The Weekly Insight is brought to you in cooperation with Machon Meir, the largest Zionist institute in Israel, bringing people closer to Judaism. Okay, that's all for this week. We'll end with some more music from Inyan Acher. Join us again next week for another edition. Until then, from all of us here at Israel National News, Shalom. I want a two, a three, a four. Bat you up, 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 bat bat you up, bat bat you up. אמרו לי לא לשבת במושב לצים אמרתי איך אני אשב ויש לי שם קוצים תמיד עדיף להיות שמח לא יכול שעצובים אז בואו נראה אתכם קופצים את הגיל הרין הגיל הרין עדי צרך את דבריו ושלום ערב הגיל הרין הגיל הרין עדי צרך את דבריו שלום ברעו עוד אישה מרחם ופיתחו שערים כמה כבר אפשר לשמוע את אותם שירים אז בוא נגיד להם יפה שלום של אמיצים ונראה אתכם עכשיו קופצים את הגיל הרין הגיל הרין עדי צרך את ואב ערך ואב ושלום ורעות גיל הרין הגיל הרין עדי צרך את ואב שלום ורעות אמרו לי מה זה כאן טריגת הישראלי אמרתי אם זה לא הפריע לשלמה אז זה לא מפריע לי זה עושה לי די שמח וזה יופי בשבילי מזל שלכם, מזל שלי גיל הרינה, גיל הרינה, די צרך את רעב ושלום ורעות 
גילה רינה גילה רינה דיצה רכבה שלום פאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשואפאפשוא